Hi, hello. My name is uh, my name is Bob, and uh, what I thought I'd do is, um, if you're like me, you follow all of the uh, canal uh, vlogs. Uh, all those great guys that are out there on, on England's waterways, enjoying themselves on their lovely boats. What I thought I'd do is, if you like me, you thought you might want to hire one. Um, I thought I'd, I'd show you what it's like. I've hired a boat for two weeks. Me and my wife, uh, we've been on it now for just over ten days, cruising around uh, the Leicester ring um so i thought i'd show you what it's like to have a higher boat you know it, it may be different to your expectations maybe you uh, it, maybe it's not for you um but you know see how it goes so uh, i'm i'm not going to say who the uh, who the higher company is because i'm not monetizing this no one's paying me i just thought i'd show you what it's like uh, in a video that i would like to know myself so uh, stick around and uh, let's go through the boat this is then. This is the boat. Uh, it's a semi. It's a funny sort of stern. This one. It's like a. It's like a semi-traditional, but with a bit of seating there, which is quite quite nice actually. Uh, the dogs like to sit on there. As I said, uh, it's just my wife and we have uh, two dogs with us as well. I'm not going to show you the name of the boat actually, the name or the or the company, because I'm going to actually tell you a few things that aren't so great about this particular vessel. Um, it's quite nice. It's a comfortable thing. It handles well enough. Um, I've had better handling boats. I don't know if that's a thing, but uh, this is not the best handling boat I've ever I've ever been on. Um, I've ever driven. It's okay. That's a, a table that does pretty much get in the way of just about everything you want to do. I wouldn't include that again. Um, this one comes also with its own TV area, which I've stuck up and pointed in the general direction. TV reception. TV reception isn't all that great uh, on most of these, but actually quite surprisingly good on this this particular tub. So, um, as I say, 48 foot long, two berth. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to drive a boat because, you know, I, I've been doing it. I've been an engineer for a very long time. I'm not an engineer anymore, but I understand how things work. And I'm not going to try and teach you to suck eggs or if you do know how to drive a boat or you don't know how to drive a boat, I'm not going to tell you how to do that. What I will say is listen to what they tell you. Listen to what the hirer tells you to do and don't, don't think you know better because you don't it's not hard to drive one of these boats it's not difficult at all in fact you know it's not it's not really sailing or anything you know uh but you do need to keep your wits about you know, for, you know 10 15 tons some of these and they do take a bit of handling um the two things i would suggest to you is do not go too fast if you're going more than four miles an hour and you think that's slow think about getting a motor home instead because you, you know you shouldn't be on the waterways the other thing is as, as I've seen, you know, don't fight it. Don't fight the thing. It's going to go where, you know, if you try and make it turn on a dime, it's not going to happen. You can't do handbrake turns in these things. They are slow, big old elephants to move around. So take your time, take your time and listen to what the hirer tells you. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just, just be careful. That's all. That's all. One of the things about this particular, this particular boat is uh, you need to tighten down its you need to kind of grease the prop hole uh, with this this greasy thing um, every night because what happens is this you turn it clockwise it just pressurizes grease into the propeller shaft I don't know if you can see that all the way down there it's right down the bottom there and I've noticed in the bilge down there this one is it's particularly leaky it's a little bit leaky and if you don't tighten up that uh, that that uh, grease gun there that greasy thing um, it does tend to fill the build up but you're not going to sink but uh, it is a little bit a little bit interesting that one oh by the way also don't uh, don't play with your dogs and run after them because what happens is you can you can fall over and, and bust one of your fingers so uh, I suggest you try not to stay uh, try to stay a bit sober if you can anywho so let's go through the boat then I'm on the stern at the moment let's uh, there's there's Mrs Bob there stealthily doing the washing up let's go down into the into the hatch here and oh, right let's look at the engine panel of this boat here i did this yesterday but it wasn't in focus uh it doesn't look much better today actually but uh, these are all the controls you need for the engine sorry about that uh you've got a rev counter there you've got a uh, standard ignition switch on off start heat heat it's a it's an old diesel engine so you need to run a bit of preheat on them when you before you start them in the mornings uh, stop button there, stops on the button, red warning lights, none of which are coming on thankfully, and the green one which says it's being charged. So don't need to look at it, you know, if you want to, 
RPM, you know, you know, if you need to know, if you need, I don't know why you need to know that. Uh, this one's got a, an engine hour meter here, which uh, I've realized doesn't work at all. It doesn't do a thing, so that's uh, that's pretty useless. Panel of three switches. We've got uh, a headlight here. So the headlights when you're going through tunnels, they're good fun. You'll enjoy those. Um, and the headlight in this particular boat is actually useless. It's uh, it's it's better to go out the front and hold a match rather than turn this headlight on because you cannot see a thing. Thankfully, I brought along with me a big head torch which I use when I go camping. So uh, that's lighting up the tunnel much better than than whatever it does. You know, I, I might get a chance to show it here. Bilge pump number one. Uh, as I said already, the prop shaft on this boat is a little bit, it's a little bit worn, so it's a bit leaky. Uh, so I'm pumping out quite a bit using this one uh, every day. You know, uh, I don't think we're going to go hit the bottom, but uh, you know, just remember that one. This is bilge number two. So bilge one, bilge two. Bilge two doesn't seem to do anything at all. It makes a whirring sound, but no water comes out. Nothing seems to be going uh, going on with that. So uh, I push it just for for the sake of pushing it, but nothing actually happens with that one. Just below that, we've got this lovely inverter switch here. This is the uh, the power inverter. If you know anything about inverters or, or the way that power works on boats or many things, actually, it's got uh, some leisure batteries which are charged by the engine and uh, a starter battery like an engine battery all 12 volt all linked in series so you've got a, a 12 volt battery which is charged by the engine and some auxiliary batteries charged also by their engine when you turn them off they should be isolated and that's 12 volt so what we're looking for in appliances is 240 volts so uh, under the steps beneath me there's an inverter big power thing and this is the thing that turns it on some boats do have this some don't it's the first time i've seen this on a boat where you have to turn the thing on um, again this particular boat switch it on I've now got power to the uh, power to the 240 volt sockets around. Um, I'm not impressed. I must admit, I'm not impressed with the amount of power this boat has because that will drain off pretty quickly if you use the microwave uh, or the hair dryer, as I might explain later. Um, you know, toaster's a luxury. We use the toaster. Um, it will go flat pretty quickly, uh, and I'm not massively impressed. It's, it's quite hard to charge things up on this boat, like this camera and uh, some of the phones and things. Anyway, that's the engine pole, engine pole, engine control panel. There's some fuses behind there, you don't see those. So moving on, we've got various lockers, various bits and pieces. Sorry for the bad camera work here. There's a bash my head. You'll bash your head many, many times on this hatch at the top here. Uh, get used to it. It hurts and uh, you'll curse yourself every time. There's a little cover of this particular boat up here. Um, the only reason I'm pointing out is this two lovely first aid kits in there. Nice big first aid kits supplied by me because uh, the company does not supply first aid kits. Whether it's a COVID thing, I don't know. Who knows? But uh, I put one for the dogs and one for myself, which I have used on the old broken finger there. So uh, it was worth bringing. There's my huge head torch, by the way, which is much better than the candle that they provide for the headlight. Moving on, we're in the galley on this particular layout. It's a reverse layout, so the um, bedroom's at the front. Um, I'm going to show you this warts and all. I'm not going to tidy up in here because we've been living in this boat for 10 days now. Uh, and so uh, I thought, well, should we tidy it all up and make it all sparkly as we got it? Oh, no, we aren't actually. It's how we live in it. So we just had dinner a little while ago. Very nice, in fact. Um, so you've got a sink there, plenty of hot water. The engine uh, keeps the hot water pretty well uh, boiling most of, most of the day. It's pretty good at doing that, I must I must admit. And there's always plenty of hot water uh, for our washing up and uh, just for washing in general. Along the top here, you've got a, a gas cooker which runs off gas lockers. There's four gas lockers, four gas bottles rather, on this particular boat. God, it's a tight squeeze in here. Um, and they've been pretty good actually, I must admit, there's quite a lot of gas on this thing. The, the oven's reasonable, you know, it's a bit of a cheap cooker. You can cook a good meal on here, but uh, you know, you're not going to be a gourmet chef. Or maybe you are, maybe you can. 12 volt fridge running under here. Sorry for camera work, I'm squeezing backwards here to try and get the, try and get the angle in. Um, it's actually quite a good fridge, I must admit, we've got lots of food in there. We've had lots of beers in there and it's worked okay. Uh, I've got to say, it's turned right down. But um, no complaints about that. Uh, what else do we have in here? We've got a cupboard under the sink, which I'm going to try and open. It's a stiff old thing. In there we've got an onion, which is very important. You must bring an onion with you. Uh, pots and pans. And I've stuffed all of our bags and suitcase bags at the back of the cupboard there. Because there's no else to store them. But the onion being the most important thing. Other side of the galley. Just right the way down here with a microwave. That apparently uh, can cook things, apparently. Uh, but it does use power so going back to that inverter thing on this particular boat that on fully charged batteries will cook for about five minutes before the batteries go flat 
and that's a major disappointment for this particular boat because it's really not good enough and i will uh, mention it to them it's just not powerful enough so uh, good looking thing haven't used it covered right at the bottom here we've got a few a uh, few provisions in there i recommend that you bring a few tins of stuff just a few tins of sort of storage cupboard stuff that you can have in an emergency because you can't you can't always find a shop when you're moored up for the night sometimes it's tobacco beyond and you cannot find uh, you cannot find anywhere to uh, get your provisions luckily we've we've planned a little bit and i'll even show you how to help you with that a little bit top of that cupboard we've got the uh, the shelf of mess as you can see so all the things that you keep forgetting you lose uh, you just chuck on there there's my hat my rain hat because it's england show you my rain hat it's england and it rains uh, most of the time uh, and it's sunny and it rains and it's hailstones today actually so quite pleased with that uh we've got a few bits and pieces we carry two-way radios a pair of walkie talkies because sometimes it's useful to uh, speak to each other whilst you're going in and out of locks you know mrs bob works a lot quite well she's she's small but she's strong as the saying goes and uh, she can abuse me via two-way radio for not being quick enough. Um, so that's pretty much the galley. The thing I like about this boat, as I said, we've hired boats before. And the thing I like about this boat is it's got a little sort of two-seat table here, which some of them don't have. Our last boat didn't have that. We had to eat off the sofa uh, and leaning onto a little fold-away table, which I didn't... It's all right, but it wasn't the best thing. This one's got a little two-table two, two table in there. We do eat our, our meals off of here. Uh, and yeah, it's a very nice meal indeed we can have. So that, that's pretty much the galley. One, one last thing is a cupboard up here to keep your cups and uh, your cereal and stuff up there. And that's pretty much it for storage. A bit push for space in the kitchen, I have to say. Um, it's not great. It, it's, it's okay. You can, you know, you can get by. It's, it's, um, I don't want a caravan. So let's move on to the, uh, to the lounge area. As you can see, it's very tidy in here. Just open this curtain so we can get a bit more light. But I'll turn the, I'll turn the light on somewhere not on the switch for it there we go so the lights on in here central heating throughout this boat it's gas powered now some of them are powered by a little diesel heater like a it's like a truck heater that trucks use i used to fit them it's, an, it's called neighbor specker or similar other cab heaters are available um it runs off diesel but this is a gas powered one uh, and it's quite nice actually i must admit it's got gas central heating it's quite unusual for a boat i i think i've never seen it before um so that's that's quite nice keeps us nice and toasty it's all powered by a thermostat up there is it on it's on at the moment so keeping us nice and warm in here and it doesn't get cold in here at all one of the biggest worries about any higher boat or any boating holiday you think it's going to be cold it's never cold in here i've not been in here at all i've been freezing freezing outside but not in here um this particular boat has uh, a tv quite a quite a reasonable size flat screen tv and i've got to say it's probably the best one we've come across as it works all the time it works really well uh, when it's got power so when the batteries come flat because you use the microwave or the toaster uh, you'll have no power so you can't watch this television but it does work you know if, you, if you're careful for a couple of hours you see all the wires and cables we've got running here a good old bundle of uh, bird's nest of cables that's because we can't charge our phones up because the boat just sadly doesn't have enough power to charge phones up very well we have to be very conservative with what we do with that um right behind me now we've got a two-seater sofa <laughs> two-seater sofa it's quite amusing because i've got two seating dogs on there at the moment these are our two whippets bruce and black and we put a blanket on there because they're, they're good dogs they're good boys but um <laughs> So, uh, you know, you've got to be careful about the paws and things. We're not, we're not here to make the boat messy. Bracken's actually, I'm laughing because Bracken's hiding behind this cushion at the moment. There he is. He's hiding behind there. Just typical whip it. Just buries his head. I'll put him back behind there. Um, and we'll give this a clean before we, uh, before we go. So we use blankets. The dogs sort of sleep on this. And we do keep them clean, but we'll give it a, a good old clean. In terms of cleaning, you don't get much to clean the boat up. We've actually, this one's got a carpet in its, in its lounge area. I don't know if you can see that or not. I missed all the mess, the dog toys. They give you a carpet sweeper, but it's not the best thing ever to do. Um, it's not the best thing ever to, to, to clean up with, you know. Got some shelves over here. <laughs> you want to move, Frank? You got some shelves over here. You know, dog stuff on there. The cupboard the cupboard under the TV here is, is brilliant for holding dog food. It's, it's just full of dog treats and dog food. Uh, that's where we've kept that. You know, we need someone to keep it all. And uh, it looks like we're messy, but we will tidy this up before we go. You know, we are, as I said, I'm going to show it to you, warts and all. So what I'm going to do is 
to save some battery power and turn that light off and move into the bathroom area let's have a light on in here hopefully it lights up enough to see yeah okay so so one of the reasons i've got this particular boat and i researched it was because just shut these doors was because this one's got a proper bathroom on it and actually yes you're not deceiving your eyes this has got a bathtub in it which is really unusual for a higher boat you don't see these bathtubs that often so it's got a bath shower above there's a shower above there you know it's not the most modern thing ever but it's full width of the boat and a lot of them are not a lot of them are very small tiny little tiny little bathrooms and you, you're really struggling I'm, I'm six foot two and i struggle in some of these um and it's not perfect it's not brilliant but it's actually a lot lot better than so many others so if you do want to hire a boat i suggest that you get uh, one with a full width bathroom like this it is it is a nice little addition because the sink's a good size Again, plenty of hot water. You've got a mirror there. It's got a shaver point there. Great if that worked, wouldn't it? It'd really be good if you had enough power to charge one bloody shaver. Um, the shower itself, it's a little affair there. My head does touch this ceiling. Um, and it kind of spits water at you very nicely. You know, if you like being, if you like the water dribbling out of a, of a, <laughs> of a, of a pumped 12 volt tap and that, you're going to get a shower at that. Um, I'm being funny, of course, it does work. It does work. It's not brilliant, but it, it works and it's nice. The toilet here, I've said that best till last. This toilet here is a macerating toilet, a uh, porcelain job. It's not one of those sort of heads that you sit on that you see on boats and yachts and things. It's not a Nelson toilet. You don't have to empty it. It's fine. Um, and it works really well. So I'm actually very, very pleased with that. It's probably the best toilet. You don't get that on the bloggers. They don't have that. They have Elsons. They have composting toilets. Great though they are. You don't want to be messing around with poo, really, do you? So, uh, not the best thing. So, this is the toilet area, full width for the boat, good size. I do like this, I must admit, the doors are a bit narrow. Again, I'm tall. Let's, let's move now into the into the bedroom. Now, again, the bedroom, sorry, I'm doing a lighting job here. The bedrooms, you know, not the most tidy thing at the moment. I'm probably, I probably should have tidied it up a bit more. The reason it's untidy is I keep the dog bed in here. We keep the dog's bed on the bed and we chuck that on the floor in the lounge when we go to bed. But again, another reason for hiring this particular boat was because of the bed size in it. You know, it's, it's advertised at a, at a premium. It has got a king size bed in it. A king size bed, I kid you not, that's longer than a king size bed. It's something like six foot four long, or it might even be longer than that. Um, and I'm struggling to get the camera on it because it's such a big bed. It's really hard to get past because it's so wide. Um, so awkward, but it's really comfortable. And I've got to say, I do like the bed on this boat. Let's go right at the front here. Right at the front, I'll try and show it to you. I've thrown a blanket on there because again, those doggies, this company particularly gives you some lovely white sheets and they're quite good quality sheets and the duvet there. But I don't want the dogs jumping all over them um we hired this boat for two weeks they gave a spare laundry as well so we've changed the bed i don't want the dogs jumping over it because it'll be embarrassing but they can lay on it this is our blanket this sort of shinny or cheap ebay blanket here they can lay on that um and go to sleep all day which they do well most of the time the dogs spend outside the dogs if you take the dog with you on a higher boat they love it you know you kind of shout at them quite a bit for jumping off we don't want them to but they're pretty good um drawback with this boat there's a couple of lights above the bed there that will burn your fingers nicely if you try and switch it off without seeing what you're doing Drawback on this boat is, is this lack of space. You know, there's nowhere to put a cup of tea in the morning. That shelf's way too high. I've already dropped something off it onto onto the, the missus' head. <laughs> what a mistake. Wasn't really happy about that. There's not a lot of storage space in here. Under this bed, you've got uh, the septic tank. So uh, you know, all the all the benefits of having that toilet live underneath this bed here. So you can't get any storage under here. The only storage you've got, I'll have to step back a bit for this, is the wardrobe at the front there hopefully the camera's picked up right so you've got a single wardrobe two drawers beneath hopefully my dirty underwear isn't in any of this and a little shelf next to it we put the toaster there because there are no plug sockets on this boat apart from the one at the front there so if you do want a slice of toast if you want to risk flattening your battery for a slice of toast then uh, this is the place to be we have had toast actually i'm being a bit uh, over, over uh, egging that one a little bit. We have had some toast, but it's not. It will drain the battery. There's a hair dryer that comes with this boat as well, and I think uh, we uh, Claire got three minutes out of it before the batteries went flat. Batteries don't go flat. The alarm goes off. It just goes beep and just just annoys you, annoys the hell out of you. As you can see, I've got my phone plugged in here at the moment. 
the inverter's not on because I'm saving that power. I've also brought a laptop with me. Forget that, that ain't gonna be charged up at all. So I gave up trying to charge that one up. Um, in the cupboard, <laughs> I can't really see with this camera, not a lot of room. There's not a lot of room in there. You know, it's enough for two weeks, but you're not gonna go out every night. Don't expect to eat at fine dining restaurants because you're gonna get grubby. You are gonna get grubby. There's a door at the front here, which allows you to go out for the front. If you want to, we do it sometimes. Sometimes we, uh, we uh, put the rubbish out the front there. Um, so that's pretty much the walkthrough of the boat here. You know, um, I don't think I've missed anything out. It's comfortable. It is very, very comfortable, but it's not what you see on the blockers videos. They've got some beautiful boats, haven't they? You know, with some lovely bedrooms and beautiful showers and lovely lounge areas. This is uh, this is kind of a, a budget version of that. You know, you're going to pay a, a huge premium if you want to hire a boat like that, if you can find one. Most hire boats I've been on are like this. They're all plywood. Well made, well insulated, good little boats, but they're not liveaboards. You know, you wouldn't want to live on one because you, you, you've got all your creature comforts that uh, you're going to miss. Things like power. You know, if I was going to own a boat like this, I would have to sort that power out. It would be, you know, priority number one to have enough power to power the appliances on board. Um, sadly, this one doesn't have that. Whether they're going to fix that, I will mention it to them when I return it. Whether they're going to fix that or not, I don't know. But uh, just be aware of these things. Pretty much that's what you get inside a boat. Um, there's, you know, you can make it as, as good, as bad as you as you like. They are warm and cozy, as I've said. They are fairly comfortable and you will have a nice holiday in them. Now, when it comes to knots and tying your boat off, you know, you're gonna use, you're gonna use these nappy pins here in this arm cove. You're gonna tie it off you know, as, as best you can. Learn your knots if you want to. Uh, I've got a particularly neat knot today, uh, but other times I just make it a big bundle of mess. I've probably overdone it a little bit on this particular, this particular mooring, but you know, it is what it is. Here's that gas heating thing I, I, I mentioned. This is the controls for it here. It kind of lives in the bulkhead between the bathroom and the lounge here. It's all kind of upright. And you say, no idea how it works. I'm not a gas engineer, but uh, it does work really well. I've got to say, for all the boats I've been on before, um, this one with its gas central heating, I must admit, it's, it's quite nice. Um, unfortunately, you've got no way of knowing when how, how much gas you've got if you're going to run out. Same goes for any any of the water in its water tank. You know, you just got to gauge it. We don't have this on all day, but uh, I must admit, it's quick. It heats the water up really nicely, uh, and I quite like it. So, how do you get around then? If you're just going to hire a boat for a weekend, it's probably not worth worrying too much about it because uh, you, you're not really going to get lost out here. But if, uh, and also the hire company will give you a map and they give you bits and pieces. But if, you, if you're a bit of a nerd like me, you like to plan things, I use these books here. This is the Collins Nicholson Guides to the UK Canals. This is one of a series, of course, number three this one is. And in it, it's got a, it's got a complete map of the canal network system. Everything you need to know is in there. They're not the most accurate of books, I must admit. There's a few times it's from, I mean, it's ordnance survey stuff in here, but some of the markings on here aren't where they say they are. So, you know, every day we follow ourselves along this map here. I'll try and get it a bit closer so you can see. You've got, very important, it shows all the pubs on here. There's a little review on the book on the, in the words as well. It tells you how to do it. Uh, water points, where they sometimes are. <laughs> They're not always there. Um, mooring points and, uh, of course, supermarkets. Let's find one here. So if you're getting a bit... Yeah, typically it's not one on this page is it yeah, right down here it's not far from where we are now actually down here you can see there's a, a supermarket there i mean you use your phone as well use google maps or other map apps will, will tell you where to go but all in all quite a good book um i use other sources as well on the mobile phone i will use uh to work something called open canal here i'll show you the icon it's that thing there which is pretty good it works off the gps off my phone tells me where we are uh and from there you can find the nearest water point so it says we're on the coventry canal it's actually been quite accurate today that's exactly where we are right now uh, and i can look for for water points get back in focus looking water points pubs supermarkets and it's got moorings on there as well so again quite a useful little thing um you know it's, it's not essential but like i say i like to i like to plan ahead um there's also uh, a very good uh, route planner which you can find online i'll put the link into into the comment section or wherever you have to put it and what we did was we planned our journey we divided our leicester ring journey into 15 or 14 nights and the app sort of told us where would be the best place to stop after five six hours of running so this is tonight's stop here i might stop there i might not might go a bit further there's some locks there i need to negotiate so maybe i'll go through 
a few more of these locks. <clears throat> anyway, it's worth having. Like I say, if you like to be a bit of a dad and you plan things ahead, you know, like we used to, um, get one of these books. They're not expensive. Amazon's your friend here. So, uh, you know, up to you, really. So what are they like to drive? Well, you know, they're not too bad. As I say, they're a bit of an elephant to push around a little bit. See, at the moment, I'm going in a, in a nice straight line, around about two miles an hour. Um, I don't go the four miles an hour. Remember, it's not a target. Uh, if you want to go really fast, then, uh, you know, you get something else. Don't do this, because uh, there's no need. There's no need to get anywhere quickly, and you're not going to get anywhere quickly. Walking pace is about it. That said, you know, regularly look behind you and make sure no one's catching you up be courteous and uh, you know, let people overtake you if you want to. Watch out for bridges, sometimes the bridges can get a bit of a wash through them and they can push you both sideways. And here, uh, sometimes you go through them and the back will kick out or they can, uh, you know, the, it's, it's because you're displacing a lot of water and sometimes it moves the boat around a little bit. So today it's fairly slow but believe you me you can get them out of shape very quickly. Take your eyes off the ball let go of that tiller sometimes and you'll get it sideways uh, and I, I've been motoring these things quite a bit I've done a few years of canal boating as a hirer and uh, even just last week I lost it you know I, I pulled into a, a lock landing um, and as I was just stopping a gust of wind came along blew the front of the boat across 45 degrees to the canal and I looked like an idiot I, I could not get it straight again the wind blew me backwards um, and I really did look a bit stupid so um, just keep your eyes about you, keep it, you know, just keep your wits about you, keep the boat straight and don't go too fast. Also, you know, watch out for the shallows because um, it's not always as deep as you think it is. So, uh, some places uh, the lock is just waist deep. And uh, after a while you get to feel that with the boat. The boat handles slightly differently when you're in shallow water. Um, you know, Liverpool's they know this uh, and they know where you can and cannot stop and a couple of times I've gone to to moor up to stop by an arm cove and uh, the boat just won't go there because you think so tall uh, and you realize it's only a foot deep there so uh, you know just watch out for that if you do run aground it's not the end of the world you can get it back with the, the rule of thumb is there I'm sure you know is don't try and push yourself onto the what if you're stuck in any harder go backwards in reverse work the tiller just try and get the boat back up again and even rock the boat you know I've been grounded a few times given this trip uh, and you know just just be a little bit wary of that uh, you'll, you'll get used to it you know the boat does handle slightly differently in shallow another thing is uh, you know it, this weather changes as you can see I'm wearing my my brightly colored yellow raincoat today it was raining a few minutes ago uh, as you can see it's a little bit sunny now uh, you this is Britain this is what happens uh, be careful that you don't have these really expensive pair of sunglasses on you and uh, accidentally drop them into the canal behind you as you turn a corner when it starts raining. So that's a, a very silly thing to do for people. Just a couple of bits of etiquette, you know, uh, boat straight here. Go slow past more boats, you know, they they tell you to go off and tick over. I go just slightly above that. Just use your common sense really because um, and not everyone does it. Some people go flying past and you'll know because you'll be sitting in your boat having the tea one night and the thing will rock the doors will slam because someone hasn't slowed down so not everybody slows down but I suggest you do it's just common things to see do that sort of thing also wave to everybody because people do like to have a wave people on the towpath and that um, but yeah just uh, just be kind be good to people so uh, we'll start for water this is uh, the sort of thing you're looking for they're marked on the map don't neglect to fill up your boat with water every couple of days because uh, you do not want to run out of water. Um, it can damage the pumps and things on the boat, so be careful with that. So, like I say, the marks on the map, um, just, uh, you'll need your, your CRT key to open it. Um, often run locked anyway, and they do leak as well, so they're always good fun. So let's talk now a little bit about safety. Whilst the sun is shining, rare occurrence in England these days, being cynical um talk a little bit about safety and you're quite safe on these boats there are a few little things that they will tell you that you should and shouldn't do um as you can see i'm not really good at it but rope management keep your ropes tidy what you don't want to do is have these ropes all across your, your deck here and you're going to get them wrapped around your feet you're going to trip over them and you certainly don't want that rope going into the water so I, i've just thrown one on the back there but just keep on it make sure that rope doesn't get uh, dropped in the water or you tangle yourself around it also you'll be handing ropes so uh, keep some hand cream handy one thing you sh absolutely shouldn't do on these boats is walk along the gunnels the gunnels are those side steps along here uh, 
uh, which you absolutely shouldn't walk along when the boat is moving. Also, do not walk on the roof. Yeah, you may think it looks cool, but uh, you're making the boat sort of a bit sort of top heavy then, so it can rock an awful lot more, and you don't want to fall off one of these things. Um, just moving around to the front here, you know, we've had a couple of injuries, nothing too serious. I fell over and broke my finger by yeah, just being a silly bugger, really. That wasn't anything to do with the boat, that was just me. Um, at the front here, you know, so many steps are quite high, it's quite narrow, and it can get a bit bouncy, so again, watch out for the ropes. Actually, Mrs. Bob, in our last boating trip, Mrs. Bob had a also Mrs. Bob had an accident on here. She was standing on top of this uh, this well deck, taking the rope in. And she fell off and bashed her leg quite badly. Uh, we laughed about it at the time, but it actually wasn't that funny. Um, and she ended up with quite a nasty injury. In fact, let's go and ask her. Let's go and ask her how that injury went. Uh, that was over nine months ago, uh, and uh, it took a long time. Let's. Uh, She's just in here. Let's ask how she how she got on with that. Mrs. Bob, do you remember last year when you, you fell off at the front there and we had a good laugh about it, but it actually was quite a nasty injury. I just want to just tell the tell the viewers just how much that hurt <laughs> and what it did to your leg. It did hurt quite a bit actually. I still got the mark from it. You've still got a huge mark, you had a massive bruise and we had to uh, bandage that up quite quite nicely, didn't we? And yes. it was all because you Missed the step at the you, front. And you slipped off and I think you caught the anchor with your... Yes, with your it slid right down my leg and grazed all my leg. Yeah. But it's a bit painful. We laughed at the time? Well, I didn't. Well, yeah, I, <laughs> I may have tittered, but uh, it wasn't funny and we had to bandage that up. So, just saying, just be careful when you're working on the boat. Like I say before, they don't give you a first aid kit. I brought my own first aid kit. Uh, oh, there's my binding that I'm binding my finger up with. So, uh, you know, just be careful out there. So what's it like then being a, being a hire boat on the canal as we've watched all these other lovely people in their liverboards. They've got some you know, lovely boats, lovely lifestyles. And they often refer to hire boaters as, as I won't say scourge, but you know, you're, you're the learner driver. You're the, you're the guy in front who want to get past. You're the new boy. Um, and by and large, that's, I don't find that to be true. Most everybody's nice, that everybody's nice, they'll offer advice. There's plenty of good people out there. You do get a couple of characters, but you're going to get that anywhere, whatever you do. I'm, I'm in the motorcycling fraternity, and there are some right fell ends in there, I can tell you. So you get that everywhere you go. But on the whole, don't worry about it, everyone's nice. Just follow the rules, you know, take your, take your time. Don't be afraid to ask questions. They're, everyone's very, very helpful. There are a lot of people out there that will help you. Um, you do get some, you do get some interesting uh, people hiring boats. As I said already, some people fight it. Some people think they can do, just, you know, they can go flat out. We, we've met one already on this holiday. Um, I was chundering along, and a guy in a 70-foot hire boat, clearly just taking it out, came at us flat out. It was flat out, went across the bow, right to left. I had time to stop, stick it in reverse. I wasn't with a draw, so I did. He. Uh, he smashed it straight into a concrete wall. The boat really tipped over, and uh, I heard a lot of screaming inside. So you know, he just didn't take any notice of what was what was told to him. Um, you don't get me like that. I even said to him, you know, mate, you've got to slow down. You must slow down. And he just gave me that look that certain people give you to say, mind your own business. And the guy, if he's still alive, then and if you're watching this, then good luck to you. You know. So if you're uh, if you're a newbie and you're a little bit worried about what other people think. You know, you might be a bit paranoid. And don't be, everyone's very, very helpful. Everyone's there to help you. You can make mistakes and, and get away with it. I, even though there was a liverboard in front of us the other day and he, he clearly couldn't handle the boat properly and even apologized afterwards that he, he didn't know what he was doing, which I found quite surprising. And if you're one of those people on the liverboards, lovely YouTubers, who do think uh, badly on hire boaters, then, then shame on you because, you know, we also have to, have to pay quite a bit of money to go on these boats and, and by and large, you know, we're all new to it, so uh, it gives us a bit of slack. All right. There we are, typical, whoops, still we going, Bob. Typical uh, English weather. Lovely and rainy. Just going into a lock here. So uh, lock's been emptied by my lovely first mate up there. She's emptied the lock. Uh, best thing with locks is, oh, take your time, sorry, I'm trying to drive keep out the rain at the same time. First thing to do is uh, just be careful with your boat as you don't try to bang it in there too much. Take it nice and easy, take it nice and slowly. 
uh, and apply a bit of reverse thrust once you're past. Let's get a, a wave from our first mate up there. Hey, first mate, thank you, Mrs. Lockie. Uh, and so, enter the lock now. Stick her in neutral. This camera's getting wet now, I'm going to have to drop out. Uh, stick it in reverse. Slow it down there, just keep it nice and gentle in there. Don't bash into the lock doors because they're, uh, you know, they're quite old. You have got a lot of them. Some locks are easier than others. Um, some, like this is a single lock, one boat at a time. They're not too hard to work, you know, anyone could work them really. Uh, you could argue that Missy's could drive the boat, which she could if she wanted to, and I could work the lock. You know, for some of the heavier locks, it's probably best to. I don't think you can see the rain coming down, it's pelting down here. Um, but other times, and most times it seems to work for us that Mrs. Bob works the lock up there and I just keep the boat steady. What you'll find happen is that when she floods the lock, the boat can shift backwards quite quickly. So you have to be pretty sharp on the throttle sometimes. Uh, she's just going around the back here to uh, shut the lock gate behind me, which obviously is a double gate thing, so she can't shut it. I could climb out, I have done. I have climbed on the roof and climbed up these ladders here. Certainly you can do that if you're, you know, if you're a lone livable person and you're going to do that all the time. It'll take quite a while, but uh, for safety's sake, and because it's raining, I don't want to skid off that roof. I'm not going to do that right now. I'll just stay here and control the boat while uh, Mrs. Bob works her abs up up there. See a bit of rain on the camera there. I'm just going to drop out for a second. So now then she's winding up the lock paddles there. Uh, this one doesn't have its paddles on its gate. It has the, the sluice runs. And as you can see, I'll try and show you the boat's now moving backwards, uh, bumping around a little bit. Um, it can get a bit violent sometimes, so you have to be a bit careful. Uh, just be handy with the throttle. This one's not too bad. What tends to happen is um, the dynamics of the water coming to the lock push the boat backwards, and then it will suck it forwards into the lock door. So um, yeah, don't leave it unattended, will you? It's <laughs> never, never a good thing. This dock's not too bad, actually. So going up quite nicely. Two paddles on this one. Doesn't take too long to go. It's not a huge rise. There's another one after this in fact which we've got to tackle. But no generally yeah they're okay. You do find some of the big double locks are a little bit harder to do. They've got big heavy gates on them. A lot of them particularly excuse me I just hit the floor go back a little bit. Yeah, we go backwards a little bit there because we're moving forwards. Some of the big heavy locks can get a, you know, a bit old, a bit dated. Some of the doors are very heavy on them. Alright, can actually nudge doors open if you want to. Um, we did find on some of the, uh, some parts of the uh, Grand Union going north through Leicester that, you know, she just could not open them. They were so big and heavy and hard to open. They were jammed, they weren't working properly. The leaking uh, doors, the leaking gates are so bad that we couldn't open them and, and it took one one lock, I think it took two of us to force that gate open to let the water out, it was a real pain. But that was going through Leicester. Uh, this is not too bad, this is coming down the Coventry Canal now, so we'll back in reverse. These single locks aren't too bad, you can live with them. So yeah, ladies, if you want to work your abs and your core muscles, then uh, get yourself a wigless and uh, work the locks. It's much like having a barbecue really, because the bloke does the barbecue, doesn't he? And uh, while a woman does a salad, so you can look at it that way if you like. There's no reason why I couldn't do the salad, and uh, she can do the barbecue. Uh, stupid analogy, but there you go. So yeah, out of this lock any second now, up to the next one. So while we're waiting, while we're waiting, could anyone tell me what this thing is for? It's focusing or not? That is focus on this thing. This thing here, I'm, I'm only on a few boats, so I'm not quite sure what it is. So if anyone can tell me what it is. Uh, you don't win anything, but uh, I'd like to know. Doggies, doggies love canal boats. Don't you? This one's not been in yet. Racking here. This one has. You saw a floating patch of weeds and thought, what could tread on that? And obviously went for a little dip, much to his surprise. Whippets don't like swimming, not their favourite thing. Uh, I'm surprised this one's not been in yet. He nearly went in yesterday, but uh, to save himself the last minute. Uh, might be long, might be long. So um, so on some of the busier flights of locks, you might find a, a volunteer uh, lock keeper. They work for, they volunteer actually for the Canals and Riverside Trust. That's what it's called. Um, and they're a godsend, these people. They come and help you with the locks, particularly if they've got a heavy or difficult lock or a technically, you know, challenging lock flight to go through. And we're at Atherstone here and there's a series of 
five or six locks, I believe, which uh, they're not too difficult, they take a bit of time. A few people come out and help uh, work the locks all day long, uh, and they're unsung heroes, really, because they really are useful when you're uh, you know, trying to get through a whole series of locks and your, your missus is a little bit tired out, so uh, my, my, I doff my hat to them. I might even join them one day, actually, if I ever get a chance. I don't live near a canal, but if I did, I'd certainly uh, you know, volunteer my services to help out. It must be quite a good way to pass the time. This is Hawkesbury Junction. I'll be doing this tomorrow. Joining the uh, canal that way. This is the Oxford. And we're coming off the Coventry, which is over here. As you can see, it's a bit of a U-turn, a bit of a hairpin bend. Shouldn't be a problem really. I have one solar panel and 12. You know, when you're, when you're on a boat, you, you wave at everybody. You know, you wave at people on the towpath, you wave at the children other boats, you know, usually wave or bridges, you know, some of that. But anglers, people who go fishing, and they're, 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 they're all the fishing, they're not even one myself, but you know, each to their own, we've all got hobbies, and we, you know, it's not to say driving a boat around is a bit of a hobby. But you know, smile, why don't they ever wave back? They're always, they're always a bit miserable looking. Now, I passed one just now, is that a shot now, but I passed one a minute ago, you know. It's like the worst thing that ever happened to him this week is me going past. And he wouldn't, I'd get my, yeah, hello. And he's like, probably hasn't caught a fish today, that's probably why. Hope he does. Maybe I could have stirred some fish up for him. Anyway, got to go as a boat company the other way, and uh, this is the easiest thing to do about the tripod. So, this time we took two weeks decided to do the Leicester Ring, which is uh, around various canals, Grand Union, uh, across the River Sword, Trent and Mersey, uh, Coventry Canal, and now I'm on the Oxford Canal. Um, and the reason we did that is that when you take just a week, seven days, boat coming, I'm going to have to come back because it looks like a bit of a twat. So yeah, so um, when you take seven days, you take a seven day holiday, it's very nice. Um, it's often in time, but really you don't get the full seven days. If you, if you pick it up on the first day, what, two o'clock, two thirty when the boat's ready, by the time you've got everything on board, dogs, kids, the food, you know, whatever you're going to need, by the time you get everything on board, you're not going to get away to the about you're going to get about two or three hours motoring in, motoring, cruising in um, on your first day. So day one, you need to get it a half day really. Uh, on the very last day, you've got to bring it back early. The boat's always going to be back in by about nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, so you know the last day is a bit of a, a bit of a rush. You get basically you get six days. And when you're not doing a ring, you're going to do three days in one direction. Then you're going to turn around when you find a winning hole and then do three days back in the other direction. So really, it's, it's nice, don't get me wrong, don't let me put you off, but you're going to get three days in each direction. You tend to see the same things on the way back, but it's on the way there. You know, no, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, there's not much you can do about it. And there aren't many short rings you can do in uh, in one week. Um, one. Uh, so this time we thought we'd do two weeks. We took uh, a ring, or a hooked ring circuit around, as I say, through Leicester. Uh, which I think, uh, you know, I can't have Leicester City Council after me, but uh, we didn't stop. We didn't stop. There's only one place, one safe place to stop, and it's not really, it's not really both of friendly the area. There's plenty of drunk people around to help you. There's a lot of zombies in the town centre, you know, holding their cans of beer, uh, or willing to help you out. Uh, and really, we kind of the locks were all sort of broken and heavy and you know it was just it was alright but like I say we didn't stop around through there. Some of the other places you know a bit they're urban areas and they you know we came back through Nuneaton yesterday and Nuneaton 
best. Must be met it right. But you know, I like I like this sort of, I like this sort of countryside you can see around me here. Really, or nice quaint little towns with little bit of pubs. So uh, yeah, so if you can't do a ring, you can't do two weeks, or you can find a nice route, then uh, you know, do your research first of all. There's a couple of places to go. There's 2,000 miles of canal network in the UK, so we're told. Uh, and I've done all 160 of them to, that, to make this, this, uh, this holiday. So uh, I'm still prevented to see. So you get Gongoozlers. Right? Gongoozlers are people who stand around and wait. And they stand and watch you at lots of other interesting bits. Um, and they're, they're a particular breed. I've done it with myself actually. They just like to watch you. Um, which is okay. Sometimes they offer to help, and my advice would be don't don't let people help you because they don't know what you're doing. Unless it's obvious that they're you know, obviously you can help people, then that's fine. General offers of help usually involves the kids pushing the gates open, and you don't want that. So um, they're also magnetic. They are uh, highly magnetic gongos. Because when you're in the when you come out to a lock, and you're entering the lock in the middle of nowhere. You'll, you'll slide that boat up like a greasy pole. It'll go straight in, into that lock, touch your reverse, won't touch the sides. John Goosler there, his magnetic force will pull the front of the boat over to a 45 degree angle and you'll bounce on either side of that lock, clanging down the side, plates will smash, and this is a plain view for everything. You, you cannot drop a boat straight when there's a John Goosler watching you, it's just a fact. So, um, you know, they're a fact of, they're a fact of canal life. Have to, uh, you know, give up to it. Give up to it. So tunnels then. This is a quite a short tunnel. It's the new bowl tunnel on the Oxford, uh, and we're just entering it. My headlamp is already on, and although it's a very short tunnel, you can see straight through this one. Um, you'll see what I mean because your eyes are plunged into darkness. Quite often you can't see. I'm not sure what the camera's going to do here. So the sound gets a bit there. It's, it's actually not too dark in here. You can see the towpath and a walk through in here. Also, there are lights in here as well. But pretty much what you're seeing now is, is what you see. When there's a boat in front of you, you can't always see it. And some of these tunnels are very long indeed. I've got my little head torch on. Possibly not see. Um, the boat coming up away now, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful what I do here. Uh, so yeah, pretty much just take it slow in tunnels. Don't go mad. You end up banging around everywhere. Or, uh, Occasionally you get people going, another craft game, slow. I won't, I won't embarrass you much over it is, but I'm at tick over here. We're not passing moored boats, we're on the cut, and this boat's at tick over, tick over, and I'm, I can't go any slower, and I'm still catching him up. So it's a little GRP craft been behind it for about half an hour now. The other day we were behind one like this for three hours. Three hours. They just will not. What's the etiquette? Somebody tell me. Comment below. Do I bib? Do I wave at them? Is there a signal I should make? Just middle of the cut, side to side, tick over. You know, you could be like this forever. So, um, you know, it's frustrating. I don't know the right or wrong here, what I should do. Somebody tell me. Island. It's the last day of our holiday, 7.30 in the morning, I'm just taking the boat back to the, uh, to the yard. If you guess who it is, then just fair enough, I don't care. Um, and it's been good, we had a good holiday and enjoyed it this time. I'm moaning about it though, the weather's been really good. But um, it's great, you know, good luck doing it's what it's all about. Uh, even it's lasted an hour, it's on the boat back, it's, uh, it's still good. So if you feel like hiring a boat, then Go ahead and do it, you know, give it a try. It may not be for you, it might be the best thing you ever did. We met some friends yesterday who have a little board, uh, and their boat's lovely, it's fantastic. It's much, much, uh, it's their home, so it's a much nicer boat. My boats we get here is a little bit more nicer. It's just, they're well made, these things, but uh, you know, a little bit too long. So, if you've enjoyed this video, then uh, I don't care if you hit like or not, really. Or, no subscribe so whatever you want to do you know please feel free to comment i might take it seriously i might not um i might reply that way uh so yeah look forward to the next one thanks very much